They had watched him escape the multitudes and even isolate himself from them, arising early in the day so that he could do something that was a mystery to them. He would arise to pray. Mark 1, 25 to 27. Very early in the morning, when it was still that Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for him. One can imagine how often this was true. Jesus was looking looked for by his disciples when he was sent away to pray, and following we see the response of Jesus. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby village so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. After praying, he tells the disciples, now let go. Let us go to the nearby villages so that we can preach the gospel of the kingdom. To do this was the reason he had come. He goes forth preaching and casting out demons. One thing in particular stands out the driving out of demons that oppressed and possessed the people, leaving them with every man of infirmities and bondage. This was something that stood out to the disciples. When they were given a chance to do the same, they took it too quickly. One time a man brought him, he sang to them. And they may cast the demons out of him. Mark 9, 17 to 28. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought my son, who is possessed by the spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever I see this in him, he throws him to the ground. He falls at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked him, disciples, to drive out the spirit. That they could not. Jesus said, You are the living generation. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the Spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy in the middle of the fashion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, falling at the ground. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, It has often thrown him in the fire or water to kill him. But if he can do anything, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. If you can, say Jesus. Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the of the inner spirit. He said, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Then the spirit shrieked, confessed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that when he said he is dead, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. After Jesus had gone into those his disciples asked him, Why could he do it when he told him? He replied, This kind can come out to him by prayer and fasting. The disciples were able to help the boy born to him by his father. And the same people Jesus said, This kind go out only by prayer and fasting. And so, like any good disciple, it must have made heavy on them that they must learn to pray. They were Jews and they had been brought up in the castle of the Jewish law. So you can imagine prayer was not a foreign concept to them. In fact, they also prayed. Yet they realized that they must come in humility and be taught again how to pray like Jesus prayed. They recognized that there was something in the prayer of Jesus that made no difference. And so they came and asked, asked the teachers to pray. Then 
And Jesus said, Matthew 6, 9 to 19, when you pray, you pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For now this is easy in heaven. Give us today our day of bread. And forgive us our debt as you also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the world. You ask us the king the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What we are really asking from the Lord, it was not to be taught a recite of the words, but rather a pattern of asking. Jesus was not teaching that this prayer had become a main prayer like the words of our Jesus that were repeated aloud for all to hear. Jesus has already warned against the prayers of the Pharisees in Matthew 6, 5 to 8. He told them, and when you pray, do not be like the people pray. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in you. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will watch you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like prayers, for they think they will be hard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. We see repeatedly the emphasis on the fatherhood of Jesus when Jesus spoke about prayer. Prayer then is a discussion between father and his sons and daughters. It's a communion between the Father and His own. Prayer is the language of the adoption we have in Christ. If new babies cry out to their mothers and fathers, then prayer is the same for us who are now born of God. John 1, 12, 12. Yet who are received to those who believed in His name, He gave them the right to become children of God, children born out of natural descent. No human decision or a husband's will are born of God. Galatians 4 6. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out our father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. Since you are his child, God has made you also his parents. Romans 8 15 17. Received does not make you slaves, slaves. So you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you have received brought about adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Our Father. The spirit itself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God. And all heirs of Indeed, we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share his glories. And therefore, Jesus was not teaching a repetition of prayer. He was teaching true prayer in his dimensions, and the first one is the relationship between him who prays and the one they pray to. This was a revelation. This was a new process in Yahweh and the Lord. And now the Jewish mind of the disciples so we have been, they will address Yahweh now as our Father. And why so? And unless a son, then one is not a man. And unless one is a man, then one cannot receive the inheritance. And Jesus said to the disciples, This kind can only go by prayer and fasting. He was also saying, This kind of prayer in the inheritance. Only the inheritance from the heavenly Father can find some an inheritance of the world. Some infirmity will only go up by inheritance. Saints, we have reached the time of the disciples and the boy, the church to be mocked by the world because we are able to help the situation that are here today. All that Pentecost was preaching and yet they are not seeing a single disease. All the fanfare of the church and every service is Lord, 
Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to ask for our inheritance that we may not be ashamed in the nations. The demons in the nations, this kind of them not proud, except by inheritance. The strongholds and principalities, this was done for, except by
So the first qualification here is the relationship between you and Jesus. If he doesn't know you as a son, you'll pray, pray, pray for millions of years, but nothing will happen. So the starting point is, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? One day I was faced with a challenge. A lady came for prayer. And she told me, Pastor, I've been praying for this for many years. But I've never had a solution. So I asked her how many years. She told me, she told me over 15 years. And it was a simple matter. Then I asked her, did you give your life to Jesus? Do you remember any time that you gave your life to Jesus? She said, no. I said, then, how do you ask for outside the gate and you expect to be hard? You need to come inside to the sheepfold, become a son and a daughter. Then you can talk to God as your father. And I led her to receive Christ. And after she received Christ, the thing she had prayed for all those years, in one month, the Lord had answered. Amen. So what does that mean? Unless we are in Jesus, how can we talk to the Father of Jesus? We talk to him through Jesus. So if you are not born again, your prayers cannot be heard. You keep crying, but you'll never be heard. Because only a mother hears her children cry to him, isn't it? Yeah? So the first step is come to a relationship with Jesus. Then we can talk to his father through him. He is the one who leads us to talk to his father through him. Then the other thing is before asking them, there has to be a journey, a relationship, and a walk of faith with him, right? Jesus walked with his father in obedience. So, whenever he asked him, he heard him. And whenever the father asked him, he heard him. Amen. So, we have to maintain this link prayer, communion with God. But then, it will be maintained by our obedience. If we are not obedient, then how will we come to our inheritance? Amen. Obedience will maintain this link of communion. Otherwise, disobedience breaks the link of communion. We are not able to ask as we should. But when we maintain the link of communication with our Father through obedience, remember Jesus was obedient unto the death of the cross. He maintained obedience. Disobedience cuts this link and the flow. It cuts the flow. It cuts the link of communication. So today, we want to search our hearts as we come before the Lord today to teach us how to ask. Because He wants to show us how to get His inheritance. This morning, He showed us one thing to ask. He is leading us. He has started the baby steps. I know I'm talking to intercessors here, great intercessors, right? Great warriors, huh? great evangelists, great teachers, great prophets. It's like we have come to A, B, C, D, E, R for apple, B for boy. <laughs> It's so simple, but yet it's the key. <laughs> Amen. That's the key that will open to our inheritance. You know, a big house or a big, let's say like Jericho, huh? Like Jericho. It was a strong city, right? It had only a gate, right? And that gate was strong with a battle, right? And a small thing called what? A key, which can even get lost. 
right? But if you lose that key, you can't access Jericho, right? You can't access your inheritance. It's a small key. Yet yeah? it looks small. But yet it's the real thing. It's a powerful thing. It's a control tower. Unless you have it, you cannot unlock your inheritance. Amen. You cannot unlock your inheritance. Not unless now God gives you strength like Samson to approach the gate. <laughs> but he's coming to say, I want to give you and to polish this key so that you can access your inheritance. Ask. Teach us how to ask for inheritance this morning. One of the simple key the Lord has given us this morning is give thanks. Give thanks looks like nonsense, right? It looks like what is this now we are doing? Huh? How do I give thanks and yet I don't have it? It's the key in your pocket. And the Lord wants you to exercise it. To open this padlock so that you can go through and get your inheritance. Amen. So these are going to be simple gifts but very powerful. Let us be careful not to miss anything. A key you just carry it in your hands. And nobody knows that you are holding it. And one of the keys the Lord said this morning, give thanks to me. Blessed are they those who obey their sin. Give thanks to the Lord for the inheritance. Teach us, Lord, how to ask for our inheritance. Right? Teach us. You want the Lord to teach you? Huh? Today he has come. One of the key give thanks. Are we going to give thanks to him today? Yes. We will give thanks as if we have it. You give thanks as if you are touching it. You give them the sin is already in your past. You give them the sin you are already driving your car. You give them the sin you are already in that new office. Hallelujah. You give them the sin. Yeah, you are waiting for that check from that business. Give thanks to the Lord. Teach us how to ask for our inheritance. Hallelujah. You know, you know in Africa, you know our background, right? Huh? Yeah. So you know our backgrounds. Our backgrounds are, yeah, this is the year of inheritance. I should bring you water from Jordan and then mix it with an anointing oil from Jerusalem, right? And give you some salt, right? So that you feel this is the year of inheritance. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because our alienation is towards <clears throat> we want a God that we can touch so that we feel something is happening. When we speak to the word of God, you don't feel something is happening. Believe the word of the prophets and we shall prosper. Amen. Believe the word that you are receiving from here. It will bring you to inheritance. If I bring you salt and I bring you soil and the bruise, know that that inheritance is not of God the Father. It is from somewhere else. And it will not last. It will bring you problems. But we are bringing you to the place, to the mountain. Thou shalt bring them in and the plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance. In the place, O Lord, thou hast made for your dwelling and your sanctuary, your hands are. Establish. Amen. We want to receive the inheritance from the Lord. The Lord of our God. Because that will be the inheritance. That will be the inheritance that will last many generations. Huh? What is the need of digging a well and uh, wasting all those tools and not break the waters? So that people can drink. Is there any need? Huh? 
is no need, right? All these years we have come waiting on God, now we have come to the place where he wants to release his inheritance to us. Jacob, Jacob, Genesis 30. Jacob knew that it's time to go back to Canaan and come from verse 25. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, and that Joseph said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children, for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you know my service which I have given for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay, if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me because of your sake. Then he said, Name your wages, and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For what you have, you had before I came was little, and it has increased to great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when shall I also provide for my own house? So he said, What shall I give you? Then Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all my all your flock today, removing from there all the speckled and the spotted sheep. And all the brown ones among the lambs, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and it shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me the time of time to come, when the subject of my wages comes before you. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and the brown among the lambs, will be considered stolen. If it is with me, And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. Verse 35. So he took that day the male goods that were speckled and spotted, or the female goods that were speckled and spotted. Everyone that had some white in it, and all the brown ones were the lambs, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob. Jacob fed the rest of the flocks. Now Jacob did not find. Now Jacob took for himself rows of green poplar and of the almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them, and exposed the white which was in the rows and the rows which he had peeled. He said this all the flocks and the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. So that they was consumed and they came to drink. So the flock was in before the Lord. And the flock brought forth strength, speckled, and spotted. Then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the strength and all the brown in the flocks of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them in Laban's flock. And it came to pass. Whenever the strong man lives on the man, Jacob placed the woods before the eyes of the livestock in the gardens, that they may consume among the woods. But when the folks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the people were lovers and the people were Jacobs. That the man became exceedingly prosperous and a large force, female and male. Did the Lord show Jacob how to multiply his inheritance? Did he? Yes. That's what the Lord is saying. We ask him, he will give us an idea how to come to our inheritance. Amen. Amen. You will not give us an idea how to come to our inheritance. A time came that he wanted to go back now, after serving for 14 years. Two wives. He only wanted one. But circumstances made him to work for 14 years, and now he has two wives, right? But
but he has no inheritance and he wants to go back to his country. You go empty handed? No. No. The labor we have labored in Christianity, the Lord is going to allow us to go empty handed? No. He's saying, come, ask me to teach you all to us for inheritance. Amen. And John of God calls, I want the speckled and the spotted and the, <laughs> the color. Amen. Did he get his inheritance? Yes. So we have come to know the Lord may show us how to ask for inheritance today. Ask the Lord to open your mind and your understanding. You might pray prayers from today that you have never prayed in your life. They might show you. But let us allow the Holy Spirit to help us and to teach us and to remind us and to direct us out to us for inheritance. How many of us went to the spot and the speck on the jungle? Amen. <laughs> let us Lord today show you how to ask for your inheritance. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says you don't have because you have not asked. If you knew, if you knew, like the woman at the well, who you are talking to, the problem is we don't know who our Savior is. If you know him as a believer, then you'll ask him for deliverance, right? If you knew him as the one who gives eternal life, then you'll ask him eternal life. Say 
things we do, we better do. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Please, I'm begging you with all my heart. You see that pastor begging? I'm begging you with all my heart. If the Lord says shout, shout. If that is the way you want to ask for inheritance, then shout. Yeah. 
liambiwa ukitaka kitu itendeke mpaka upande mlima mpaka ufunge siku 40 eh na muongeze zingine ushinde Musa na ushinde Yesu hey listen <laughs> listen Yesu akikwambia fast fast akikwambia dance dance you know i get so surprised in this church and now i know that religion has bound him so much it's when the lord is saying shout you know shouting is it uh talk talking eh shouting means what shouting but you find someone going Jesus today. 
The Lord said, give thanks to me. Give thanks to me. Give thanks to me. Why is he asking us to give thanks to him? You know when someone says, thank you, is it for sure, it's done. In our hearts, we know for sure uh, that can be happened. We are home and dry. <laughs> when it reaches them, we are done. We are sorted. Teach us how to ask for our inheritance. Today, as we worship the Lord, today, as we praise the Lord, today, as we give the Lord thanks, I want you to listen carefully to the Lord because you're saying, Teach us, Lord, how to ask for inheritance. The Lord will show us ways of asking Him, ways of asking Him for inheritance. You show us how he wants us to come to him, how he wants us to relate to him, so that we can have our inheritance. Amen. So I want us to arise as we praise the Lord this morning. And then give thanks to the Lord this morning. So I want us to give thanks even before we worship the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord thank you this morning for the inheritance. He is bringing us to the better place. Amen. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, O Lord, in the place thou art made for your dwelling. The sanctuary of your hands have established. Amen. Amen. Say thank you to the Lord this morning for his doing. He has found us to give us the inheritance. Give thanks to him this morning. Open your mouth and say thank you to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You have come to give us an establishment to establish us in our inheritance. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Lord, for your doing. We give you thanks because of what you are doing and where you are bringing us, Lord. It shall be known that, oh God, my Father, you pass by in this place, a time like right now. Oh Lord, our God. We worship you, our King. We glorify your name. We bless you, our Father, for you are doing. It's marvelous. It's good. It's mighty. You are one. It's a mighty God. Hallelujah. You are working to bring us to our inheritance. Oh Lord, we are asking. Teach each one of us how to ask for our inheritance. Hallelujah. Teach each one of us, Lord, how to come, how to relate with you. How to ask so that you may not miss the portion of our inheritance this year. You are God. You are God, my Father. Before we go to worship, is there anyone who wants to give his life to Jesus? You have never committed your life to Jesus, and today you want to have a relationship with Jesus even before we start the worship and the praise this morning. Is there anyone we can pray for?